Avast ye scallywags, there be pirates in these here waters. Battling piracy- uh, normal voice now. Battling piracy is a relentless pursuit for all hardworking developers, because if those pesky sea dogs can find a way to play a game without paying for it, they'll certainly find out how. The pirates are an ingenious bunch. They may be among us right now, but that doesn't mean clever developers haven't implemented a few traps and surprises to prevent, punish, or expose the theft of their games. Surprisingly, these methods are often quite tongue-in-cheek, permitting devs the last laugh as they make those pesky thieves walk the plank for their foul deeds. So, shiver all your timbers and get your hands on vi video game deck, because I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most ingenious gaming anti-piracy measures. Number 10. No Parkour, Mirror's Edge Set in a future dystopian society, this first-person action-adventure title sees parkour as the most sought-after skill on any LinkedIn profile. The world, story, and gameplay all rely on spryly navigating over all manner of obstacles, whether they be the real rooftops or the metaphorical barriers and twists in the narrative. <laughs> so important is this aspect of traversal that without it, the player could not experience any of what the game has to offer. Thankfully, though, our protagonist, Faith Connors, is swift, agile, and and technically skilled. Well, unless you've illegally downloaded the game, that is. Any player who chose to obtain an unofficial copy of Mirror's Edge would find themselves struggling to complete even the tutorial level as Faith clumsily bumbles round and topples straight over the sheer edge of any skyscraper she can find. Granted, this may all be funny in a fail compilation, but it renders the title unplayable. The clever programming trick causes Faith to slow down as she nears any obstacle until she casually strolls to her death at the base of those impossibly clean buildings. Oh, and if you're wondering about how difficult it would be to keep the city clean, especially with Faith-shaped smears on the sidewalk from pirated copies of the game, we've got a list for that. Number 9. Don't Drink and Drive – Grand Theft Auto 4 if you were to boot up an illegal copy of GTA 4, you may be quite happy with your foray into the criminal underbelly of society, perhaps feeling as though you've embodied a GTA protagonist IRL by stealing it. But, you know, without the murder, of course. Or maybe with the murder. Turn yourself in. However, crime doesn't pay, and soon enough your uppance will come, intent on destroying your ability to revel in borrowing cars from friends, meeting beautiful ladies, and hosting quality fireworks displays outside. For you see, as you reach your safe house, the camera will start to shake uncontrollably and incessantly, as if your in-game character were drunk. If you somehow soldier on through the nauseating experience, however, brace yourself for another surprise. Wobble your way into the driver's seat of any car, and you'd find the vehicle accelerating automatically, soon reaching top speed and starting to burn out. While modders eventually found a fix, you've got to hand it to Rockstar for spitefully punishing the naughty players and proving that, as we've already said, crime doesn't pay. Unless you're playing GTA Online, of course, which, judging from the size of that swanky penthouse, shows that crime pays quite well, actually. Number 8. Codes in the Manual – The Secret of Monkey Island See? Even pirates are against video game piracy. Cast your mind back to days long past, a time where video games had actual manuals within their boxes. Yes, bound physical pages, often in color, bearing lore, advice, controls, even the secret to eternal life, or so the legends say. First released in 1990, Monkey Island was born in an era before games were torrented illegally online. Instead, pirates were forced to copy the actual disc. In fact, this was quite easy to accomplish back in the day, and even a novice could complete this simple task. Hence, the Dial-A-Pirate wheel was developed. Upon firing up Monkey Island, players would be asked to match a location with a date, along with specific pirates from the wheel's artwork. The player had to rotate the wheel, match up the symbols, and note the resulting code. Yeah, it was a bit daft, but it was also very clever. Then again, the same can be said for the series itself, I suppose. Naturally, it wasn't long before pirated copies would be accompanied by photocopies of the wheel, but it certainly threw a spanner in the works for those wishing to steal the game. Hmm. Actually, I might need to combine that spanner with an octopus tentacle and an orange for a puzzle. Can I have it back? Number 7. The Hideous Scorpion Monster – Serious Sam 3 BFE 
As head of the Yorkshire Mafia Peter Hell's Heritage Austin can attest, the descent into the world of crime can infiltrate one's psyche, pervading all areas of one's life like a sentient beast intent on destruction and strife. Or more literally, it can appear as an unbeatable scorpion monster in serious Sam 3 BFE. Crow Team, the game's developer, introduced this formidable creature to slaughter and distress those who pirated the game. It's hideous, aggressive, and alarmingly fast. Skillful players may be able to dodge the onslaught for a short time, but this creature will never relent. He's always there, always hunting, always at your heels. The creature is immortal and unrelenting, and often succeeds in rendering the game unplayable for most crafty pirates. Of course, there are those who deem this to be akin to an ungodly hard mode and seek to complete the game with the scorpion trailing after them like Ashley Gray and post Las Plagas mutation, but you know, that's weird. Either way, this beastly scorpion ruins the experience, making the playthrough more arduous than enjoyable. Perhaps this truly shows that crime does indeed <laughs> have a sting in its tail. <laughs> Number 6. Kaboom! Command & Conquer Red Alert 2 this real-time strategy title set in the same alternate timeline as Red Alert contains two separate campaigns, each with distinct storylines for each playable faction. Players are tasked with strategically defeating enemy commanders while defending their own territory. In addition, they must seek to gather funds and produce effective military units, both of which are vital for the success of the missions. This, however, can be quite difficult to achieve if your carefully crafted units spontaneously explode as soon as you try to use them. That's right, this anti-piracy measure transforms your battle-hardened units into delicate and volatile devices, intent on anxiously detonating at the earliest opportunity. Within 30 seconds of starting a match, the pirates were forced to watch helplessly as their squads and bases were reduced to ash and shrapnel, leaving the territory without defense, their army without the ability to attack, and the battle inevitably lost. Some argue that, to maximize the frustration, the detonation should have occurred a little further into the match, thereby rendering any desperate progress absolutely worthless. However, in preventing the players from even firing a single shot across the battlefield, they are denied any of the courageous glory of the series, instead surrendering to utter, embarrassing defeat every single time. Number 5. Bye Bye Save Files – Earthbound the Mother video game series consists of three installments, Mother, Mother 2, aka Earthbound outside of Japan, and, <laughs> you guessed it, Mother 3. In Japan, the series is quite popular, but it's Earthbound itself that has garnered the most substantial cult following. However, players hoping to pirate a copy of this famous installment would soon encounter several layers of infuriating anti-piracy protection which ranged from the simple to the downright redonky-donk. For instance, if the game is played on a PAL console, a message will instantly call you out for your naughty behavior. If Earthbound is hacked to allow the player to skip any of the frozen anti-piracy screens, more enemies will be spawned in an attempt to make the game less enjoyable. Essentially, the player can try to enjoy a cracked copy of the game, but the developers have ensured that, at every opportunity, your time and efforts are squandered. They seek to ruin your time with the game, deleting data, preventing progress, and, worst of all, making you move from your comfortable position on the sofa and forcing you to traverse the vast expanse of your living room to reset your Super Nintendo. The fate worse than death. Number 4. The Pirate Becomes Pirated – Game Dev Tycoon this title lets you step into the shoes of a video game developer as you hustle to establish your business in such a competitive industry. You start out in a musty garage, tapping away at your keyboard, your head full of hopes, dreams and motivation. You slowly build your business, developing skills and establishing a reputation in your field. You work hard, day and night, sweat on your brow, aiming to reach the staggering heights that you've dreamed of for so long, only to be rendered bankrupt by the illegal distribution of your precious intellectual property. Yep. If you've pirated Game Dev Tycoon, your in-game company will suffer the same fate. The pirated version of the game lets you launch your new business, but soon causes you to start hemorrhaging profits due to piracy. The problem only gets worse until your entire business fails. The in-game notifications are especially scathing, but some players actually complained about this apparent aspect of the game on social media, thereby outing themselves as the same pirates they so vehemently hated. The messages were penned by Patrick Klug, founder of Greenheart Games, because he accurately predicted that the game was likely to be torrented, leading to a rather sobering response when many players were made to sheepishly reflect on their actions. Number 3. Super Invasions – Dark Souls 
Ah, oh, from software, you treat me so harshly, but I just can't quit you. Our toxic relationship provides both frustration and joy, exhilaration and devastation, and I wouldn't want it any other way. However, gamers wishing to cheat on this beloved developer would soon find themselves cowering beneath the crushing torment of From Software's vengeful wrath. But don't accuse them of not having a sense of humor, however, for they reveled in the opportunity to punish players and retailers for breaking the Japanese street date. Cue evil genius laughter.mp3 as the developer unleashed max level black phantoms onto those who booted up the game before the release date. These 1900 HP juggernauts sought out those pesky pirates and delivered swift, gruesome justice on behalf of their overlord. And to put that HP count into perspective, you'll be lucky to have that much health even after significant grinding. They're level 145, all their stats are 99, and you will die. It's not as if the series needed any help in ramping up the difficulty, but this anti-piracy slash street date breaking measure is made even more hilarious because of From Software's usual merciless treatment of the players. The overkill is glorious in its swooping, vengeful brilliance. The Dark Souls of punishing players for breaking street date, if you will. Even in the world of Dark Souls, where death lurks in every corner, these phantoms became the terrifying bogeyman that even a roaring bonfire could not hold at bay. Number 2. Strange Happenings – Spyro 3 – Year of the Dragon Those booting up a pirated copy of Spyro 3 would soon encounter Zoe in Sunrise Spring, whereupon she would warn you about some strange goings-ons in the Forgotten Worlds. These bizarre occurrences are vast and utterly frustrating. Barely a single element of the game will progress normally, therefore hindering the player at every opportunity. Aiming for a 100% run? Not gonna happen. Numerous enemies will simply refuse to drop gems, and many gems usually found on the floor will just not be there. If you successfully manage to play for a few precious minutes without anything going wrong, the game may just lift Spyro into the air and return him to the start of the level, or you might be randomly returned to the wrong homeworld. Egg collections will be reset, money bags will demand payment for areas that you've already unlocked, transportation will not work, portals take you to the wrong places, and a classic staple of anti-piracy, you may just find that all of your data has been wiped. For such a colourful and cheerful series, this title does not offer much mercy in response to thievery. It's absolutely riddled with spiteful booby traps and malicious tricks, many of which would even garner respect from the likes of From Software. Number 1. Pirates get their personal information made public. Cross Days Cross Days is a Japanese erotic visual novel developed by the appropriately named Overflow Studio. It is a dramatic slice-of-life story that follows Yuuki Ashikaga as he becomes the subject of infatuation, an almost unheard-of plot in the anime genre. Although you should never feel ashamed of being yourself or enjoying the things that you love and we would never, ever seek to yuck anyone's yum, erotic visual novels are a guilty pleasure for some players. They've opted to appreciate this style of game in their own time, after all, preferring not to broadcast their appreciation loudly to family and acquaintances. However, enjoying a saucy novel could be the least of your worries, because a Trojan in the code of pirated copies seized players' personal information and posted their web history to social media. Those wishing to have their information removed could do so after publicly declaring that they had downloaded such a game illegally, but not before the internet was made privy to your potentially scandalous browser history. Been searching for Triple Jump fanfic? Now your grandmother knows. Been listening to remixes of Peter saying panties a million times in the 10 weirdest collector's editions list? Now your workmates know. And there's no way for you to complain because the information release wasn't actually an underhanded act. In fact, the Trojan was actually explained in the software terms of service if you bothered to read it before rushing to play your filthy, filthy game. Ahoy, me hearties! There be our list, but are there. No, that's enough of that. But are there any other funny anti piracy measures that you've heard of? Sound off in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.